Hey everybody, James here from 3D Brothers Printing. Uh, I wanted to take a minute today to do a reaction video. I've never done one of these before. This will be my first time. But this video was sent to me by my friend and colleague, uh, Vincent of 3D Brother Printing, uh, the other day. And I, I don't know, it just, spoiler, hit me in a weird, bad way. And I just wanted to take a moment out of my day to address it, to come to a... Yeah, just to give my thoughts on it. So, a little bit about me. Um, I, very, I bought my very first 3D printer about two years ago, and it was a Creality. I went with Creality because that's the that that was the industry every standard. Every I mean, as for a starting out hobbyist, it was everybody was Creality. They're moddable. They're you can you can mod them. You can do everything, right? So, I went to Creality. Used that for just a, almost a year before I heard about the bamboo scene. Got into the bamboo scene, bought me a bamboo. I've never owned a Voron or a Prusa. I hear great things about them. Um, so I'm not biased one way or the other. I would, I mean, if I had more disposable income, of course, I'd buy a Prusa MK4 just to see how it is. I'd buy, I'd be, I'd be willing to buy a Voron and assemble it. I'm very good with building things with my hands. So the assembly thing, doesn't bother me too much. That being said, this video came to my interest. I wanted to uh, go over it, review it, kind of react to it, um, and 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 get into the meat of it. This is for the Creality K1 printer, which um, has is releasing soon. There's review copies being sent out. So let's just get into it. All right. So inside of this Indiana Jones style crate we have the highly anticipated Creality K1 3D printer. So let's take it out of the box and see what's going on with it. All right, it's looking pretty nice. Let's do a general overview of the outside and then we'll dig into the meat and potatoes of this build. There's a ton of little plastic wrap to peel off of this thing. Okay, just kind of cheesy going into it. You can't fault him for that. He's trying to have fun with the video. He's trying to Make it lighthearted, uh, welcoming with the Indiana Jones esque leather jacket. The the packaging was a bit extra. That that was the box though. So if you enjoy peeling that stuff off, you're gonna have a field day here. The overall look of this machine is just gorgeous. This whole top is just one giant diecast frame. It's completely continuous all the way around. So that should really help increase rigidity of this top frame. It looks like these side walls might be aluminum extrusions. So this aluminum frame makes it really lightweight and stiff. This front piece appears to be glass and then the sides seem to be some kind of plexiglass. Inside of this block, we've got some of our filament and we'll take the screen out of the box and just get that plugged in right away. So we've got this awesome little connector. I guess it just plugs in like this. And if you look at the, uh, the door, it just has a little cutout for the screen. So there's a little gap so that you can open and close this door. And it appears that we've got a little bit of tacky stuff. So before I get started here, I'm going to wash those off just to make sure that. It okay, so first things first, he, he's complimenting the frame and he likes it and it's in everything. Um, I will say that this frame is, you know, it's very similar to the X1C. Uh, it's almost like it's a P1, because the X1C and P1P are not the same printers. It's like this is a P1P that they put a frame around with, uh, in, they, that they enclosed. Uh, and he, <clears throat> just for some context, he, he has done a video on the P1P and he didn't have a lot of nice things to say about it. So going forward from here, let's, we're going to keep in mind that he has been very critical of the P1P. Uh, and we'll get more into that later. Uh, comparing that with the P1P to this, the K1, he, he shows a small fault roll of filament. It looks like a 500 uh, half roll of filament that they sent uh, comparatively. Uh, not a lot of printer companies even send filament. So that's already a big plus. Uh, you usually get like a very small, like, not even a spool, just like a little bit of it's they don't send filament. So 
Already a big plus. They do send a half a roll filament, it looks like, for the K1. Uh, I hope they continue that to uh, when they put put it to market because that's something they could just be like, eh, well, we decided not to. This is just for the review copy. But it's good that they did send that one filament. It doesn't completely gunk up those linear rails. To do that, I'm going to use some of these lens cleaning wipes. I use them for all sorts of stuff. We just want to make sure those rails are nice and clean before we get started. I will tell you this. I don't know why the rails would be gunked up. Uh, so, obviously, out of the box, it's ready to go, pretty much. Just like the X1T and P1P are. Uh, and that's nice. <laughs> because, like, with my Creality, I had, there was assembly involved. I know with the Voron, it's all assembly. I know with the Prusa, there's, you can get it for an extra cost. Up cost, you can get it fully assembled and sent to you. Otherwise, you got to assemble pieces of it. So this is by just like a manufacturer thing, something. I mean, it probably wasn't intended. Uh, I didn't see him take anything off those rails that were sticky. So, uh, yeah, it's nice that it's fully assembled. I mean, you know, you do a little bit of cleaning and you're ready to go. So, so far, uh, the good those are good things. Five K one, you get your filament. It looks solid. It, I mean, the frame's good and everything, and it's ready to go out of the box. This is more for the electrical engineers, so you can feast your eyes on whatever the heck's going on down here. Okay. All right, so we've got a belt tensioner here. Pretty neat design there. Uh, we've got our Creality power supply. I'm not going to bother. One thing I will say, I like where the belt tensioners are on the K1. They feel like they're more accessible uh, than they are on, I would say, the X1C. Though the X1C is not terrible. I do like that it's right there at the uh whatever it is yeah up there you can just like access it from the side panel i like that actually a lot well, they're opening that up right now but just so you know it's not a mean well or something let's just go for that 17 or 15 minute benchy and see what we can get and i want to run the calibration just one more time just to make sure everything's all good before we get started here so we'll just let this whole thing run Unfortunately, it takes a little while. Just like with the Bamboo Lab printer, it's got a extensive calibration routine that it likes to go through before each print, which I'm sure is really just there to increase your likelihood of getting a successful print. Yeah, we're just gonna skip through this uh, printing stuff. So the 600 mm a second, that's, that's good speeds. <laughs> like, that's not mince words. That's great speeds. <laughs> um, it's about, that's what the X1C, that's like standard. I think it's a bit faster, but that's the, to be clear, the X1C standard is 500, but they have other printing speeds. Uh, like ludicrous mode is way faster in, infinitely faster. Um, and I've printed many things in infinite or in uh, ludicrous mode, and they come out very well. Sometimes there's some bad layers and stuff here and there, but for the most part, I can print a, a, a project at ludicrous mode uh, and have it turn out good because I'm going to have to do finishing work on it anyway, sanding, priming, painting, which you got to do even if you print it on a normal speed. Uh, so, but to be clear, bamboo, sorry, Creality is that's good speed 600 that's fantastic way better than any of, the, any of their other printers by by and large uh coming out the gate good on the speed all right so i've spent a day with this printer just unboxing it testing it taking it apart and looking at all the pieces and based on my time with this machine i think i've kind of figured out what it's all about first and foremost the k1 is a flagship printer Creality has invested significant engineering, design, manufacturing, and marketing resources to let everybody know that they mean business, and this is the best printer that they can make today. <laughs> so he goes in to say, yeah, they, they spent a lot of money on design and marketing to make sure. <clears throat> it sounds like some of that marketing budget went to this fellow. I'm just saying, hey, he's saying, hey, they did all this stuff just to make sure this is great. 
and this goes back to his p1p review which was not stellar or glowing and i'm not saying bamboo is the end all say all because they're not because there's other printers out there that do they that they do do what the p like bamboo does uh but yes it, that part sounded a little scripty maybe like uh marketing said hey uh, well, here's a review copy. If you could, if you could hit some of these points for us during the review, we we'd really appreciate it. With Creality's typical design process, it's more like an evolutionary design. So, for instance, they started with the Ender Three, they made the Ender Three Pro, then the Ender Three V2, then the Ender Three S1, and they're just incrementally adding more and more features onto their same basic frame of a printer. However, with this K1, they designed it from the ground up. This is an all new frame, all new motion system, all new main board. This is just like completely designed from scratch to be as good as possible. Uh, yeah, so he's right. If you look at the models previous to this and then this one, uh, it would appear that they took a very large uh, leap. Uh, I don't want to say one way or the other, but yes, they definitely changed their methodology to making printers all of a sudden. And they really did their homework here. If you look at some of their past designs, like the Ender 3 S1, you know, it was missing some really important stuff, like an all-metal heat break, and the part cooling fans were kind of insufficient. I mean, you've got this massively overpowered Sprite extruder that's got a ton of potential for printing things quickly, but then you've got this tiny little part cooling fan that's just barely blowing little wisps of air onto your printed part. It's just kind of an asymmetric design, and it's begging to be upgraded and modded to unlock its full potential. So for most people that bought a Creality product, half the fun is just improving the printer, printing stuff out to attach to it. So I will say this, uh, going forward, this guy is big in the modding scene. Well, not big in the modding scene, but he enjoys modding his printers he thinks it's part of the fun of the hobby for him great um and i but i will say this with creality there's <laughs> plenty of room for improvement through modding um as as their printers go uh in fact it's almost like they uh it's almost like they give you a printer that's half half it works but uh they want you to do the other half of the work through modding to get it to work uh better uh whereas which is great for the hobbyist that enjoys that type of stuff doing those extra steps doing it all that but for a hobbyist that just wants to get a printer and print out the box without any of that it becomes encumbersome and adds to the frustration that can come with the hobby so I uh, just wanted to make that clear because in the past, this guy's had a lot of... <clears throat> he hasn't been the most praising of Creality, which is what, is what makes this review so unsettling to me, uh, as we'll get into. But buying aftermarket upgrades and putting things onto it. I mean, it's good fun, and it really helps you personalize the printer. But all of that was necessary because Creality released products that didn't have a fully fleshed out design. Like there's just these little design oversights or insufficient pieces of the machine that could easily be upgraded to unlock new levels of performance. However, with this machine, their whole goal was to make something that was high performance. This frame is super rigid and lightweight. This tool head is also very lightweight and can extrude plastic at a very high speed. The motion control system is Core XY with these unique large stepper motors with large pulley gears. I mean, this thing is just designed to be as fast and high performance as. Okay, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll weigh in on everything he's saying. Uh, I just want to jump in here and be like, just listen to everything he says, because it's gonna be important to uh, my reaction to it. Possible, and they spared no expense when it came to upgrading all the different parts of this machine, and because of the attention to detail. In so, I gotta say, it's gotta be said right now. There's. Good stringing. There's some quite a bit in front of the boat. There's stringing at the back side of the uh, of the cabin of the boat. There's stringing. The very back of the boat. There's some bad layers. Uh, the very top looks 
that's not a good benchy. Okay. Uh, is it, was it fast? At what, what do you say? 17 minutes? Yeah. Fast, but it's not printing at that speed accurately. Uh, so that's the first thing we should note right now off the bat. Um, just something to take, keep in mind. In the design of this machine, it's frankly a mechanical work of art. This thing is packaged so well, and the material choices are just excellent. I think this probably will outperform most Vorons out there. And, you know, Voron... First off, it will probably will not outperform most Vorons. Let's be, let's be fair about that. Vorons are really good machines that you got to build yourself. But very good machines, very fast. They have these... Voron has those speeds. They've had those speeds for a while. Uh... And also, I think I don't think Voron is trying to be something they're not. So that's that's important to note here that uh, Voron is a great machine. Voron owners really pride themselves on having a printer that's super fast because they built it themselves using high-end components. Well, Creality decided, you know, we're just going to make basically something with Voron performance, but out of mass-produced parts and just crank them out for as cheap as possible and give people these nice assembled printers. And, uh, you know, that's better for most people. I know there's always going to be the crowd that loves building their own stuff and just really enjoys working on their printers. However, this is something that you can just buy and unbox and start printing with at 600 millimeters per second. That's just absurd. And that speed, 600 millimeters per second, is slightly faster than what the Bamboo Lab printers can do. Again, it's slightly faster, he says. Yeah, slightly faster than their base speed. The bamboo printers can go up to 2,000 MMS. Okay. This guy is, again, he's kind of, he's, 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 the, he's burying the plot. Like, he's burying the main point of it all. And the main point of it all being that bamboo can go much faster. They have, and it's all within their software. You get in there. I could talk. I could talk more in depth about it, but the point is he's burying the he's burying the lead uh, to the effect that uh, yeah, it is faster base speed, but uh, K one hasn't came out saying they have you know accelerators or faster speeds. Uh, bamboo out of the box prints at five hundred. It goes up to two thousand. That's in, that's a that's very interesting to know. So this is Creality kind of being like, you know what, we're going to one-up you and we're going to make it cheaper than your printer and we're just going to try and take back as much market share as possible. And that's the other thing that this printer is all about. It's Creality trying to become king of 3D printers again and just be on top and just kind of be the dominant force. Okay. It is cheaper than the P1P and I have said many times if Bamboo wanted to assert their dominance in the market, they would put the P1P even for like a summer sale at $4.99 and they would lose money in the back end. But business wise, they would gain money by getting the loyal fan following in the. They'd lose money in the front end, sorry, but gain money in the back end by getting all the loyal fan following. Um, that being said, the thing about Creality being king again, I don't know if they ever can be. They rested on their laurels for way too long, drip feeding these incremental little upgrades, but never really innovating in any way. Uh, until Bamboo comes out with this printer, like Creality, Voron's been around for a while. Creality was like, yeah, we don't care about them. That's not for the uh, like the general hobbyist. So we're just going to, and Proust did the same thing. So we're going to drip feed them these minor upgrades and feed them crumbs and morsels. Where Bamboo came out and it's like, no, we're just going to hit the scene hard. And once they did, now everybody else, Prusa and Creality, they, oh, we got these printers too. They can print this fast. I think there was a lot of, uh, they lost a lot of good faith uh, in the 3D printing space. Uh because now people know that that was an option. That's always that that's been an option. The technology's been there, and they just they they was content with drip feeding us the same uh, 
basically the same printer year after year with no upgrades like even with creality and the community as big as it is coming up with like mods for the printer that should have been standard in and in, in future models and they but just wasn't uh and now this is like a this is the this is the, the k1 is their attempt at playing catch up because uh bamboo came out swinging uh so this is their catch up game um i don't think they can ever be king again i think they've lost a lot of faith uh good faith within their within the 3d printing community so basically with this machine they've done their homework they've produced an excellent design and made sure there's no weak points in the design everything is equally good so that you're able to print as fast as possible and there aren't any obvious things that need to be upgraded all the obvious upgrades are installed from the factory which is you know kind of the way that it should be i mean just look how well everything is integrated and packaged together in here we've got these led lights that are just sunken into this back corner of the frame up top here and i'm going to skip some of this video through the, some of this video but i did want to go over how he's praising the design of this printer so and he, he is comparing it to the p1p which i guess is a fair comparison up to a point um but if we're going to closer, it, this printer has everything that the X1 has. X1 has, it's more expensive by far, but this printer, you got the fans on the inner chamber and on the side, which is the exact same placement as the fa the, the cooling fan on the X1C. Uh, you got the LED lights inside the chamber, which again, it's exactly where the you know how the X one C is set up, you know the even the uh, the extruder housing looks. I mean, it's identical to what the bamboo looks like. You can see that just from a uh, you don't even need a close up uh, comparison. So he, I need like again, he was very critical of the P one P. This printer is a P one P essentially kind of a hybrid of p1p x1c merged and he he loves it everything about it he's in love with this printer like uh, or <laughs> he's told he was in love with the printer i i digress but yeah we're gonna listen to a little bit more of this and then we're gonna skip ahead because he basically just goes on to talk about all the like everything he likes about the printer and how he likes this I, that the rods aren't made of carbon, which it's a weird thing. He says these rods, I like that they're not made of carbon. He's like, I don't actually know how well carbon will hold up um, uh, for continuous use, but I like that these are steel. Like yet he, he likes that they're steel better than carbon, but he doesn't know if car how well carbon holds up under like continuous use, which is weird. It's weird that you would say that, like, if you like that carbon rods or steel rods better because carbon rods are proven to fall, fail more under continuous use. That's a fair, that's a fair uh, take on it. But just to say, I like this better, even though I don't know how carbon rods will hold up. That's, I, it's, yeah. Anyways. So I'm going to play it, and then I'm going to start skipping. I mean, you can barely tell that there's room to put LEDs in here, but they've integrated into the whole machine on the side. So, you know, you've got three linear rods, but they're just tucked away right Every So let's start with the frame. Now, yeah, these little cutouts to include LEDs that I was referring yeah. to earlier. They're just tucked away right up in there. So this thing is just excellently packaged and put together in a way that yeah, so I'm just, just skipping. looks super clean. And if you just take a look at this thing, it looks great. I mean, they really paid attention to the design and made it look as good as possible. But, you know, you've got these four pieces of aluminum. Of, uh, it looks great. It's a bamboo lab. I'm starting to get used to it. And it actually works. System. The bed leveling idea. That's another thing. That, that build plate is a... <clears throat> it's a poor quality build plate for a what they want to show as a high-end printer. That's, that build plate is not great. I don't, I mean, 
it does it work yeah it works as a build plate it works great uh better build plates out there oh yeah absolutely uh stock p1p comes with a better one stock x1c comes with a better one uh stock prusas are better uh i mean it's a low quality build plate so but again it's cheap i mean they gotta cut costs somewhere right uh whereas the p1p is more expensive and they gotta cut costs somewhere and that's that's another that's a whole other thing right like yeah, it's, you get what you pay for, and this is cheaper than a P1P, but trying to boast that it's better than, well, even if it was, you got to understand it's cheaper, so they're cutting costs somewhere, not just on mass-produced parts, although mass-produced parts is part of it, which doesn't always mean quality. Because the bed doesn't have to move fast. The hot end does have to move fast, though. That's something that it's going to give you slightly better. I was able to when I ran the full pad, it wasn't a perfect first layer, but it was a good oh. enough first No, no, look at that. No. What do you mean it wasn't a perfect first layer? Okay. Let's roll that back. Over the entire build area. It wasn't a perfect first layer, but it was a good enough first layer, and it didn't come loose, so not a whole lot to complain about there. It wasn't a perfect first layer. But nothing to complain about. Your first layer, <laughs> first half, is very important. Um, and to say, oh yeah, it was, it was kind of a crappier subpar first layer, but I got no complaints. Is being disingenuous. Um, this is where it. I mean, he's been shilling kind of a little bit this whole time, but this is where it really starts to break down and be a, be an issue, right? The K1 is built around a Core XY kinematic system. Standard. The system here has Core XY. a stepper motor here, a stepper motor here. These are absolutely massive stepper motors, and you've got some really large pulley gears here, and that's helping you get those high speeds. One way to make the print head move faster is to spin the stepper motors faster. The other way is to put bigger pulleys after just one of the I guess that's what they've done competition instead of making noise coming for a rod. I mean, I'm not sure how long it'll last in fiber. Okay, here it is. Here's where he's talking about the rods. And a carbon fiber coming from them. And they should last quite a bit longer than a carbon fiber rod. I mean, I've never seen a carbon fiber component in a wear situation like that. So I'm not sure how long it'll last on the um, P1P and X1 carbon. But, you know, I, I think this is a much more traditional setup, having the steel with the brass bushings. I mean, that's a tried and true combination. I'm not sure how carbon works in a wear situation, but you know what? I'm just going to say it's worse based on nothing. He bases this on absolutely nothing. Just, and that's fine. If he says, my personal preference is I just like steel, just because I like steel. Like, that's how I, I like it. That's tried and true. I like that. But he doesn't. He says, he, he almost insinuates that carbon fiber is going to just wear out. It's going to, it's, it's inferior. Having no experience to the contrary, because he knows that's what other printer, uh, the, another printer, he's indirectly comparing it to in in that particular instance. Well, he's directly comparing it, but he's also making it. Point is, he's making it sound like maybe it's it could be worse. Carbon fiber could be worse. I don't know for sure, but it could be. Do you really want to take your chances? I mean, it's very disingenuous. Combination that you've been using that can just falls apart. Your Titan bus provides this great will work to break on driver. So also down here, a half volcano. Also got these all, you know. Um, okay, we're getting into the part that really. Okay, he's gonna start talking about the touch screen. <clears throat> but this is just a reaction video. I'm not doing like a point-to-point -point comparison, but if I was, when he gets to the screen, 
Ooh. More cooling air. Just a really good design overall. The user interface is really good. We've got this touch screen here. So, you know, um, on the P1P, you've got basically a remote control from the 70s. On this printer, you've got... Right there. So he's comparing, first off, a touchscreen display to the P1P, which he's trying to compare this printer to, even though this printer is more of a homogenized P1P X1C uh, hybrid to kind of compete with both of those models from Bamboo. They're trying to do it with one printer. So he's comparing this touchscreen to an analog screen, which is, by the way, you're comparing apples to oranges there, but also... Interestingly enough, that UI on that screen over there, that UI, identical. One-to-one -one identical to the X1C's screen. I mean, it says Creality on it, instead of Bamboo. That is a one-to-one -one clone. Like, there's no differences. The icons are the same. The, the temperatures and the spots are the same. The XY access control is the same. Even the 110... One millimeter, ten millimeter, thirty millimeters—all that's the same. That is a one-to-one -one clone of the X1C. It's it's uncanny how identical it is. They took the X1C's UI's DNA, they put it in a test tube, and they cloned it. Like it's straight across cloned, and then they added their branding to it. So anyways, yeah, it, it, he, he's comparing uh, uh, an analog touchscreen to a touchscreen display. Uh, it looks like it was a controller from the 70s. Okay, bro, they're not the same type of display. And while I, I prefer touchscreen, I do. I, I, I wouldn't compare my Ender, my, my Ender printer's analog display to... <laughs> to my X1Cs. There's no comparison. Like, clearly one is just better. Got all these nice little buttons here. Nice touch screen. It's good to have. I mean, this is kind of the gold standard in terms of uh, a good user interface. Exactly. He just admitted it. It's the gold standard, whereas an analog isn't. So why are you, why are we making that comparison? Compare it to the X1Cs display, sure, Okay, then we can go back and forth, and but then you're comparing apples to apples because it's the same display, it's the same UI. And the other nice thing about this is it's got local storage, so you can plug in your USB drive and print something off of it, and it automatically puts the file onto your local storage. Then you have your history here, and you can hmm. reprint things. So it's just a really good setup, and I've really enjoyed using it so far. It even has an app and cloud functionality, I doubt I'll ever use either of those, but it's nice to know. Okay, so he doesn't showcase the cloud or app functionality. And then it says, I doubt I'll ever use them. My printers are in the same room as my office, where my computer's at, everything. I could use a USB, plug it in my computer, upload the file, unplug it with my computer, take it to my printer, plug it in my printer, Find the file on my printer uh, through my printer UI until it's printed. I could do that. That's a lot of extra steps. Or I can just, from my Bamboo Studio slicer, say, send a printer, send a print plate. And it just does it. I can be out of the house. I can find a print I want. My printer's on my and ready. I go to my phone. I say, oh, uh, I want to print this. So I download the file on my phone, send it to my Bamboo Studio. And send it to my printer and it, it just goes. Why, if you have that functionality, A, are you not showcasing it? B, like, would you never use it? Why would you never use it? That's makes me believe that in this current state of review, how the printer is, it's not functional. And marketing said mention it, but don't you can't. You can't show it because it's not quite there yet, which is concerning to say the least. Um, yeah, cloud functionality and app access is 
huge. It's huge. Uh, when I print out my Creality, I, you know, it's, yeah, it was that whole process. Plug it in, find my file, slice the file, send my file, slice file to my removable drive, take my re removable drive over to my printer, put it in, get into my printer, go through the screens to find the file, to find the right file, and then, then I can still tell it to print. Uh, having that act, that remote access to just be able to just do it from anywhere. It's huge. It's huge. It's a quality of life thing and it's massive. It's massive. It's, it may only save you, uh, you know, one to two minutes per print, but it's still massive that I can just click it and go click it, send print and leave. And I don't have to, I don't have to worry about it. It's a 10 second process and it's done. So didn't showcase it just kind of glossed over it and then made it seem like it's not a big deal. I'll never use it. Yeah, I don't know that they're there. Um, I just kind of prefer to do the offline workflow. So I got my little USB drive and I just plugged. Said nobody ever. I just prefer to do it a more complicated, more steps involved way of doing the same thing and taking more time to do it. Said nobody ever. Get in there and that's good enough for me and the craziest thing about this k1 is the price at 599 it's an utterly ridiculous price point for this machine yeah i agree with that at 599 it's a great price point and you know what it's even an attractive enough price point i might even consider buying one because that is a good price point for the speed you get it's i was thinking that my next printer is going to be a p1p but maybe not i might go with the k1 just because the price point is so good and it it is comparable, it's comparable, uh, is not. I would. I don't know if it's better. I don't know if I'd say that. But at five ninety nine, that's a price point where we're getting to where an everyday hobbyist can just go in and buy a good printer, right? That's good. That's a good thing. I love to see the competition. Just like I think the P one P being at six ninety nine, a little pricey. I think if it got bumped down to four ninety nine, that'd be about a good point where. It, but this is good. Five ninety nine, fantastic price. I mean, that's very cheap for something that's this fast and this high performance. It's less expensive than the Bamboo Lab P one P, but it's got a feature set that's more similar to the Bamboo Lab X one Carbon. Because disagree. It comes with a fully enclosed print area. It's got lights, the side part cooling fan. Again, it's a homogenized version. It's a hybrid of the X1T and P1P crammed into one printer. The vent fan in the back. Also, you've got the full color touch screen to control everything and the little door on the front. I mean, this thing is just fully loaded for a printer that only costs $600. I ran a lot of prints on here. I made this little rocket thing. This looks well and we're gonna go English. A uh, little second improve with and x axis up here. I think they put some there and I just cleaned that up. But if you you don't be just take a look there and when all the part cooling fans are to cool things down, just kind of the price. Uh, the third, just take a look there and make sure you're not going to get it. Sorry, I'm scrubbing there. through the video. Uh, the third con is it's super loud when all the part cooling fans are on. That's just kind of the price you pay when you've got massive part cooling fans that are able to cool things down pretty much instantly. So I'm going to experiment with some settings where you scale those fans back a little bit and you get a quieter printing experience, but you still get relatively fast print speeds. Four, the cable chain bumps into the lid and the side sometimes. So you See, that's another thing. How the top is open like that, I don't like that. Uh, with the, I mean, it is better than the P1P, which is completely open, but the, uh, the, the X1, no, and the, yeah, the, cable chain coming at the top like that they could have made the printer a little like let's say two inches taller and made that all enclosed uh they chose not to uh he is he did mention the noise although he did he's like oh yeah it's not a big deal i'm gonna experiment with it when he reviewed the p1p the noise he's like oh it's the noisiest printer i've ever had i don't know blah, blah. like he doesn't attack it like he did the noise on the P1P, which, again, a little bit biases, I think, playing in here. So you can see up here when this, I don't see something to keep an eye on. And maybe on the, like a little from this bottom panel kind of vibrates a little bit during Z axis a little bit. 
So that just contributes to a slightly louder printing experience. It's not the end of the world, but it's just something that I like to note because I always make note of loud noises on. Okay, so he went into okay. The bottom plate vibrates a bit. The t back plate vibrates a little bit. He was talking about when all the fans are going it's out. He went through all this, uh, how, what the, how loud it can get, and then he ends it with it's not the end of the world. I just like to note it. On the P1P, he like had a decibel meter out. He was like, "Oh, this is so loud!" It's like, you know, it was a big deal to him. It was a, it was a big deal to him that it was so loud. So there you go. But overall, these are relatively minor issues. And a lot minor of issues. In time. I think this new K1 series is going to be the new printer to beat for the foreseeable future. I and disagree. Hopefully, we have a game of technological leapfrog where we've got companies continually outdoing each other and we're just going to get i better agree and i do agree with that i hope this i i there's a the, the companies are going at it against each other trying to one up each other and giving us better quality products year after year model after model but we're not getting like we had with creality and prusa for so many years where it was just incremental upgrades with each model so i agree with that better and cheaper and faster printers. So I want to give a huge thanks to Creality for sending this machine over for review. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that they sent this over to me. I've been quite critical of their printers in the past, but I totally understand why they sent it over to me without hesitation. Because, frankly, it's great. You know, there's not a whole lot to complain about here. It's just a really good printer overall, and it's one that I could totally recommend, especially at the price point that it's at. Now keep in mind, this is just an initial review. Time will tell how these machines hold up over time, and I hope Creality these K1 printers. There will be some crazy people out there from our yourself. Consider using my affiliate link video and are considering buying one of these K1s for yourself. Consider using my affiliate link in the description below. That just gives me a little financial support. So, I Okay, this is where we're going to end this video on this rant. So, now that he got to that point, so, <laughs> his very first link in this video, under the video description, is his affiliate link for Creality. Great. Support him, give him some money, if you buy it through his thing, if, this video, if you found this video helpful, whatever. However, there's a, there's a very strong tone of hypocrisy here. In his P1P review, he has a whole section of the video on the timeline that says, beware of, of the shills or something like that. Well, he goes in and he's talking about how, yo, be beware of the hype and these people, they show for these companies so that, you know, you'll buy from their affiliate link. So they talk good about these printers and he's talking about the P1P and this specifically. And they just want you to buy from their affiliate link so they get money. And he doesn't have a Bamboo affiliate link. Uh, interestingly enough, this was a... Pretty stunning review. He gave it, I mean, I would say he he didn't give it a, I mean, I'd say watching this review, I'd be like, oh, that's a 4.5 out of 5 star printer. That's a good printer. That's great. If I didn't know any better and I was trying to get into the hobby. And then he leads with, oh, check out my affiliate link. It's right down here. Yeah, if you click that, I get a kickback. I get, I get paid. It supports the channel. <sighs> I think it's disingenuous. I think it's hypocritical. I think it's, he had a whole section of a, a video where he was not affiliated or sponsored. I think he should have had a sponsored disclaimer at the beginning of this video because I very much feel like this video was a sponsored video. Uh, and he's like, hey, check out my affiliate link. Boom, right down there. He just had a video, like two months ago, made a video about how beware of the shields. They just want you to buy with their affiliate link. Oh, they're uh, dubious and uh, oh, they're going to trick you. They're going to steal your money. And then in this video, he's like, hey, check it out. I got an affiliate link for this guy here. They sent me this printer for like, right? You, you can trust me. Uh, I would just say buyer beware when you're doing 3D printing. This video was a little angering to me. Uh, because it felt disingenuous. It felt like it was scripted uh, at parts. It felt like he there was more incentive for him to be nice about the printer than point out anything bad. Yes, in the past he has been attacking Creality, but 
especially from a business standpoint, somebody who's been critical of a product, how do you, how, it's just good marketing to find somebody who's been critical of your products, get them on board with you. Cause then people will be like, Oh, this guy didn't like reality in the past, but he's talking high of this. It's that's good marketing. It just, this guy didn't like him. Now they do. So they must be good. Uh, and they sent him that printer. I don't know if they gave it to him or they sent him as a review copy. He wasn't clear about that. Uh, he just said, thanks for sending me this printer. So maybe he got a $600 printer out of it. Plus an affiliate link. Plus who knows what else. So I would surmise and say, I don't think this is a bad printer. I think it's great for people getting into the hobby. It's a lower price point than P1P and X1C. It's a, it's a lower price point than Prusa, uh, and especially than Voron. But I would say that this video is disingenuous, and there are definite things to consider. when If you, if you can spend $600, then maybe you can just spend $700 and get a P1P. Uh, you know, if you're spending that much money on a printer, maybe you go Prusa even. Maybe you go save a little bit more and do an X1C because Creality doesn't have a stellar history of uh, having super reliable printers is all I'm saying. Uh, again, I like I said, I might buy this in the future, but I just wanted to make this quick React video because this video hit me in such a way and it, this is not a first time React. I've seen it before, but this hit video hit me in a way, and I didn't, I, I didn't like it. Um, I'm sure he, he's a great guy, and he's doing his best in the space that he's in, but I don't like his review of this particular printer. I found it very disingenuous and very kind of gross, to be honest with you. But that's all I got for you today, guys. If you liked what you've seen here today, hey, why don't you consider leaving a follow, or I mean subscribing, hit, leave a comment. What did you think of this printer? What did you think of this review? What did you think of my take on this guy's take on this printer? You know, leave it in the comments below. <clears throat> Love to hear from you guys. Uh, subscribe. Check out our Etsy shop, 3D Brothers Printing on Etsy. It's just 3D Brothers. I'll leave links down there for all of that. I'll leave the link to this uh, original video down there. I'll leave the link to the, his P1P review down there. I'll leave all these links down in the down in the bottom description. Uh, and thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.